Hi, this is Janae with the Itch to Stitch. In this video, I will demonstrate how to create a font selection chart using free software from Brilliance. If you're anything like me, you own a zillion fonts and you love having access to this wide variety when creating projects. But the reality is having this many options can be overwhelming to our customers and it's probably advantageous to everyone to narrow the playing field. Say you own a boutique and people come and shop in person. You may want a stitch sample of, say, your eight favorite fonts that are great for personalizing applique shirts for children. If you run a website or have an Etsy shop, you could post a picture of this stitched out image or even just a digital image from your software to show what fonts you have available. Let me demonstrate how we created this font chart. I'm running in Brilliance and Express mode on my computer. Jana stitched that sample for me with her multi-needle machine, so under preferences and hoops, I selected the 200 by 300 millimeter hoop, that is the 8 by 12 that Brother and Baby Lock multi-needles use. And then I created lettering objects for each font that I wanted selected. I click the A button to create a lettering object. I know for sure that I want to use Oscar as an option click set and then from the font selection menu select Oscar and I'm going to be using um, primarily 1.5 and 1.2 inch uh, sizes for this chart and I'm just going to make several lettering objects the next font I know I want to use is ham bone that one is super cute for both boys and girls and I'll pick the 1.5 inch size for that and another lettering object for Amaret. Most of these are going to be gender neutral, but we need to include a couple girly ones. And Amaret is super adorable. And let's see, I'll choose the 1.25 inch size. One reason I'm doing that, um, I'm sticking with 1.5 and 1.25. First of all, because they're going to fit in my hoop nicely. But also, I'm selecting fonts that have a smaller and larger size available, which is important. If you're going to offer this font as something to customize, you want to make sure you have enough options to accommodate short names and long names, and being able to switch to another size is really helpful in that. All right, so you see what I'm doing? I'm creating a lettering object, I'm typing the font name, and then uh, selecting it from the font menu. And I did that eight times. Just to save time, let me jump to that. All right. So here I have selected the eight fonts that I want to use. I've typed the name or a shortened version of it. This one's actually closer to free and that doesn't all fit. So I just stuck with closer and got them arranged in the hoop exactly the way I wanted them positioned. Now, when you create lettering objects, they come in with a default color. And so there's lots of blue on my screen. Looking at Jana's sample, you see that we used pink, blue, and green, and we chose those colors to match the theme of our website. I like the color pink that Ballerina Script and Amorette came in, and I want Curtsy, the other girly font, to be that color. So I will select Curtsy, and then the Color tab, and when I click the box, this selection box opens up. Right now it's set to my Brother Thread Catalog. But if I select palettes, it'll narrow down the options to what's currently on my screen. And I can select that pink, click OK. All right, um, Barnyard and Hambone were in green. So I will select green for Barnyard and green for Hambone. And then Closer, Oscar, and Nick were blue. I like the blue that Nick is in, so I'll leave that alone and make Closer and Oscar match. All right, once I have it colored and spaced the way I want, we could save this and stitch it. There's one other thing I would probably do for myself. Now, if you have a multi-needle machine that changes threads for you, you may not care about this step, but this is set up to have eight different objects, and it's going to stitch from the first object through to the eighth, and you'll notice that my colors alternate, so my machine will stop to allow for eight thread changes. If I don't want my machine to stop, I can rearrange the stitch order first. So if I want all the pink to be stitched, I will grab Curtsy, drop it on top of Ballerina, 
grab Amaret and drop it on top of Curtsy. And now it will stitch my three pink names without stopping and then pause for a thread change. So let me get Oscar and Nick up here and then Barnyard and Hambone at the bottom. Now when I save this, it will save with three color stops instead of eight. So I'll go up to File and I will choose Save As, Stitch and Working. When you save a stitch file, that's going to allow you to choose your um, format selection. So I would choose PES for a brother or a baby lock machine. But also saving a working file, that is the file that Embrilliance needs. And so if I ever need to return to this document, I would want to open up the working file because it will remember all the fonts that I selected. All right. Let's say that you're limited to a 5x7 hoop and you really can't stitch a sample like this very conveniently. You may not need to stitch a sample. You could just save a screenshot of this image from your software. Now to do that, the first thing I did was I went up there to preferences and under grid settings, I changed the background color to white. I believe the default color when you first install in Brilliance is a pale yellow, but I switched mine to white so I would have a clear background. Then if you go up to view, you can uncheck draw grid and uncheck draw hoop. And when everything is deselected, you just have this image of the fonts and you can take a screenshot. I'm on a Mac and a screenshot is a built-in utility. You just hit command shift four and then you get to drag a box around what you want to take a picture of and once you have it positioned where you want you let go of your mouse and it takes that screenshot and saves it wherever you um, set it to save. If you're running Windows it depends on your operating system but there are free screenshot apps that you can use as well. Alright let's say you are going to take a screenshot and post this in your Etsy shop but maybe you don't want it to be colors maybe you just want a black and white image. You can quickly change all those thread colors by clicking the one color button. And let's go to our thread palette and scroll down. We can select black thread. And just like that, all of our threads are changed to black. The problem is this isn't quite as legible. Those colors really did help separate the words from each other. But we're not stitching this, so it doesn't have to be so perfectly tight in a hoop. We can actually spread these out. So let's spread them out if we want to a little bit to make it a touch more legible. Scoot hand bone this way. Once you kind of get them positioned where you want, then you could actually, I'm gonna select these four, and this button allows me to align and distribute, so I will actually align their centers, and that will center all of those with each other, and I'll do the same thing with this column if I select these four items and align center and hit apply, then that will uh, align them as well. All right, now I can take a screenshot of this and post it at a watermark it if I have software to do that and post that in my Etsy shop as font options. So if someone wants Oscar, they can they know by name which font to request. One reason it's important to save the working file is let's say after um, some time goes by, not very many people are picking Nick and you want to remove that font option. Or maybe you've purchased a new font and you want to update your font chart. Let's say now you own sticks. And instead of offering Nick, you want to offer sticks. Then you can go through and um, quickly edit your thread chart so that it has another font option. And then all you have to do is take another screenshot and you have your new updated chart. All right, let me show you a couple other working files that I have saved. These are things that I have created in Brilliance that I have absolutely no intention of stitching. I use them to help me in my font selection process. All right, here's one that I've created that has eight of our fonts that are swirly. So this is for when a customer has a little girl and they want a swirly font but they can't decide which font to use. You could just narrow down their options that way. But let's say your customer is very picky. Maybe her name starts with a J and she's very picky about the J's. What you can quickly do 
is highlight one of these and let's say I'm that picky customer. I can type Janae, click set, and see what my name looks like in that font. And in fact, if I copy my name and then quickly go through all of these and paste my name and click set, it will change the word swirl to the name Janae and all these. Can you imagine if you wanted to give eight font options to somebody and you had to merge these letter by letter, you just wouldn't do it. But this is a super fast way to customize the options. Now I would just kind of step back and see if any of those need to have their letters repositioned before saving. Maybe on this one, I would decrease the letter space, make them look as presentable as possible, but then I would simply take a screenshot, send this to today and say, which font do you like? And if she looks at these and says, I like the green one, she doesn't have to know what the name of the font is. She's just telling you the color. I selected eight different colors just for that reason. You can come back to your working file and if you don't remember, and Brilliance remembers, and you can see, oh, Janae wants to use Amaret. And then I can see it's available in four sizes and pick the size that is perfect for my project. All right, one more working file to show you. It is my absolute favorite item and I probably use it every day and it is our monogram options. What I have done is created an enormous, if you look down here at the size, let me switch to inches. This is an enormous file, it's 19 by 12. I would never stitch this, but I created a lettering object for each of the monograms that the Itch to Stitch sells and colored them a little differently and spread them out. And then I went back through and labeled them by using the built-in block font that comes pre-installed within Brilliance. I chose that because this is the only font that can be resized when you're running in Brilliance in express mode. So I typed the name of each monogram so that it was easy for me and my customers to see what the name of the monogram is. All right, so you can create a custom monogram chart. You could post this in your Etsy shop using just a standard ABC monogram. But again, if you have a picky customer, boy, my monogram has a J and a T, and that can be really messy. And so um, I can run through this really quickly and create a customized chart. I can change that to a J. Um, so my last name is Trammell, my maiden initial is Carr, and I can, let me copy and paste that. Quickly go through here, and paste my monogram in all these options to see what it looks like in every monogram font that the Itch to Stitch sells. All right, this is two letters, so it's just JT. All right, I'm gonna skip past um, the stack monograms for just a second. Let me finish these traditional three letter monograms that bring in the initials when you type them in order from left to right. One more. All right, stack monograms are a little bit different. They don't have a built-in feature. So for ease of this chart, I have them set up as two separate, separate lettering objects. I type a lowercase j and c to stack on the left and a capital T on the right. And same thing here, lowercase j and c and capital T. So just like that, I've run through all 13 monograms that we sell and put my initials in place so I could take a screenshot, send that to Picky Janae and ask her which monogram she wants for her project. It's labeled by name for her and for me, so it makes it easy. The other benefit to this chart is some of our monograms include frames. And when I made the chart, I picked the most basic gender neutral frame, but I'm doing this for me. And so I know that there's a girly option for natural circle. There's a scalloped frame. So I could change it like quickly there. Mansion includes a more feminine option. I could change it there. Clubhouse has eight different frames. Let's see what frame number five looks like. All right, there are instructions for using the frames with your monograms in the BX folder of the zip. And also, if you watch video five, we walk through that process step by step.
But now I've made those traditionally um, kind of gender neutral monograms a little bit more feminine um, for myself. All right. I hope you find this absolutely amazing. I think using Embrilliance is the best way to quickly choose fonts for custom projects. Thank you for watching. Please check out our other videos for more helpful tips.